she's out of practice. Right, I'm looking here. I just have Henry watching me and he's like, what doing? Okay, I'm nervous. Let's put on do not disturb. Hi everybody, welcome back to Love well, Minutes. Um, long, long, long time no see. This is the longest break I've had, so I am sorry for that. Um, yeah, it's been probably two months, um, and I went completely AWOL. Um, I've I've been sick for most of that actually, so yeah. This is gonna be a long one. Get yourself settled with a nice drink and a little treat. Um, because I have pretty much February and March's projects and purchases to show you. Um, but yeah, it's been a long time. So the last episode I think was with Chloe. At the start of February we filmed that. And then I went to Edinburgh to see my other sister Jess and picked up COVID while I was there, which was more than I bargained for. So I came home, I started to feel a little bit sick while I was in Edinburgh, came home, took a COVID test, it was positive. And so that was, you know, it was a pretty bad dose of it. I ended up giving it to Neil, but he got over it, you know, fairly quickly. And then I, developed a chest infection from COVID, which happened the last time I got COVID too, in 2021. So I went from COVID to, I had a, that for about 10 days, straight into a chest infection. That is still kind of lingering a little bit, but I'm getting my energy back, which is lovely. Um, the days are getting brighter here. Um, <clears throat> what what did today? 22nd of March, so I think our clocks go back next weekend, go forward next weekend, which means it'll be even nicer and brighter. Um, but yeah, I noticed such a change in the wet, like in my mood in the weather. Um, I think I've probably spoken briefly about it before, but I struggle with my mental health. Um, I do suffer from depression quite, quite often. Um, so I had a pretty tough time at the start of the year um, and that really continued right into also being sick with Covid and everything so it's nice to feel energised again and feel hopeful and yeah in a better place now than I was before um, but I just couldn't, I like I literally did not have the energy to do anything other than granny squares. <laughs> I was knitting on jumpers. I have so much to show you, but I was knitting on stuff and it was too heavy for me to hold. Like I was knitting on it and I'm like, I am exhausted knitting on this. So yeah, granny squares has been the majority of my time. Uh, that's what I've been doing. But I have so much to share with you. I have lots and lots of purchases. I have been trying to do the thing where I knit more than I buy. That went out the window in March. I bought so much um, for projects. So it is intentional buy-in, but I've bought so much and I didn't have the energy to keep up with the knitting as much. But I put this big bag of projects and things to share and talk about and it's been sitting here for a couple of weeks just waiting until I have the energy to share it with you so I've forgotten what's in it so it'll be a wee surprise for me and you so <laughs> I don't even know I'm sure there are finished objects in here so let's dig through this I know there's one project that I want to talk about I'll leave that till later on right let's see what we have my God, I really haven't shared very much with you. Okay, first and foremost, Melissa, my dearest friend, 
look away for the next three minutes or so. <gasps> I forgot her other thing that I made her. Where is that? Hang on. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. Melissa, look away. This is my orange stash. Hi, bud. Um, <clears throat> Melissa's due a little baby. She's my oldest friend. And her baby is due any week now. She's right at the very end. And I have knit her a little baby jumper. <laughs> a little tiny person's gonna be in this. So this is the flax pattern, free pattern on Ravelry by Tin Can Knits. Um, I changed the little garter detail on the original pattern. There's a little garter detail down here. I changed it to a little um, seed stitch just for something different. Um, oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. I haven't blocked it yet, but I will be blocking it in special baby wash for Melissa. And then another thing that she's no idea about, I did a little embroidery for her. So I'm gonna put the little baby's name here when we find out what the baby's name is. And it's just a little bunny with, made from little, um, what are they called? French knots. So I, because it's a little Easter baby, a little springtime babe. So those are my gifts from Melissa. Melissa, you can come back if you're watching. I'll tell her, you know, in the first time, let's just skip over them. Um, so most important finished objects there. Um, next finished object, which, oh, I forgot to tell you what the yarn is. It is a camera rose yarn that I got from um, Hanks and I tucked the little thing in but I don't know where it's gone now. Um, I'll link it down below. I think it's their like summer yarn. It's cotton and wool. Um, I'll link that down below when I find my tag. Um, yeah so moving on. I did put the tag in this one. This is Knit Out of Birch Street Yarn. It is Cinnamon Snow, one of the Christmas colours. I finished my muscle bra and I wore it while I was in Edinburgh because of course I did and actually I love it. I really didn't think of it while I try it on. See I don't think I suit hats particularly but I needed it in Edinburgh. But that's not too bad. I think the colour suits me. I love it. And I hated knitting it. I hated knitting it. I just... It, do you know what it is? I had no faith in myself when I was knitting it. And it's just cleaning his paws. If you can hear that, that's very off-putting. Okay, puppy, leave it alone. Good boy. You put your weak head down. Um, yeah, I knit it and hated it because I didn't have any confidence in it. Chloe put me off too because she's like, it's just a big sack. What are you knitting? So, yeah. The muscle reconstruction. If you haven't seen, everybody's seen these. So, um, forgive me for explaining it to you. But you knit this big long tube. This actually took 106 grams. My skin was big. Um, but basically I knit until I had 20 grams left. And then I decreased um, because I didn't want to run out of yarn. Um, so you knit this big long tube and then you fold one end into the other so that it is double thickness. Um, and I'm a bit neurotic about matching up the things and then I just kind of swivel it round to get it even. And then you can wear it slouchy or you can turn your brim up. And I actually love it. I think I knit in between sizes. Um, oh, I think I took notes on it. I knit in between sizes because uh, the pattern gives you a very good schematic. And I measured my head and my head is big. But I was in between two of the larger sizes. So I did my increases to the number in between those two. And it's worked out perfectly. Perfectly. 
so I take back everything I said I love it I think I love it because I know I like the object I think while I was knitting it it was just plain stuck in it it was boring and because I wasn't excited about the product I, I didn't like it but now that I actually have worn it I see what the hype is about it is so cozy and warm it's so lovely so I love this I love it it's a good well see I like having a vanilla sock on the go and I my goal is to have jumpers on the needles always at least one jumper on the needle this year always and I like getting jumpers to the stage of <clears throat> where I have stuck in it and I can just go around and around and around so those are my main stuck in it projects for reading or tv or whatever so I don't really have a need for another stuck in it project but if I don't have one of those in the needles I'll definitely put one of these I've promised Neil we'll get one but it's now not really hot weather so that'll be for the autumn Neil loves wearing a hat it's starting to get really rainy outside so if the light changes oh, there's nothing I can do about that either <laughs> um so yeah my muscle bra love it love it okay right so here's another finished object I don't know how many I have but I have been so sick that I've missed several family events I missed my stepdad's birthday I missed Mother's Day and there's something else I missed what was it um there was something else well we didn't do anything for St Patrick's Day because I was sick as well and also Belfast gets a bit mad on St Patrick's Day so we tend not to really do much but yeah I just missed a lot of like I haven't seen my family since I recorded the podcast at the start of February so that's been crap to be quite honest but anyway all that to say I knit my stepdad Paul a pair of socks Um, these are knit out of Cascade Heritage uh, I can't quite remember the colours it, this is like a kind of you can see it's like a kind of orangey red and like a bluey grey um yeah just stocking it uh socks did little stripes this yarn is much softer than other sock yarns so i initially knit paul a pair of socks out of west Yorkshire spinners sock yarn because i love their sock yarn and neil loves their socks and i like wearing them too they're but but they're not rustic they're not super super soft and luxurious and Paul, I knit Paul a pair and they irritate his feet. That he can't wear them. And he wouldn't say anything. It was only mum told me that he can't wear them. So I chose this yarn instead because it is super soft. It's so soft that it pills a lot. Um, I've knit a couple of jumpers out of this and they pill. You have, I have to glean them practically after every wear. But... They're soft. They're a nice soft option. They still have nylon in it, so they should wear. And I did some afterthought heels, so when he wears through them, I can just replace them. So hopefully Paul likes these. He hasn't seen them. He didn't really ask for them. <laughs> but I felt bad because I knit him a pair of socks that he doesn't like to wear. So hopefully these are softer than the other ones and that he actually likes them. And if not, Neil will get them. <laughs> So that's a little finished object. When is that? One, two, three, not including my embroidery. Very good. I have more. So you haven't seen my February socks. <coughs> Excuse me. As you might know, I like to join in the Grocery Girls Sock Bash every month, where you knit a pair of socks um, and enter it into their Ravelry group for a little prize draw. And every month they have a theme. You don't have to knit to the theme, but if you do, you get double entry. And February's theme was hearts and love and pink and whatever. So I nailed this theme. Absolutely nailed it. I did. I haven't even worn these because I wanted to show them on the podcast. So I haven't worn them. They are enorm. 
I still haven't nailed my colour work sock knitting quite yet, but... <gasps> oh, look at them! These are from Stone Knits, from, I think it's Charlotte Stone's her name, from her book. What's her book called? Charming Colourwork Socks. And these are her little heart patterns. Um, I have to tell you, I was bored to tears by the end of it. There's a lot of knitting in this. Um, and they are too big, which is my fault. Because my initial plan was... I have little chunky calves, so my initial plan was to knit these in, so I cast on the bigger size. I think I cast on 72, maybe, no, maybe 68 stitches, whatever it was. Cast it on with my regular needle, but it, it was a bigger size so that my leg would be bigger. And then the idea was to go down a needle size to make sure that this is tight. And I forgot to do that and I got to about here, realised that I'd forgotten it and I was like, I shan't be pulling back all this colour work. So I just continued knowing that they would be big. Um, but that's okay. Did a short row heel, which turned out quite neatly actually. Um, it's not my go-to heel at all, but that actually looks pretty good, doesn't it? Nice and smooth. See, it, like, I haven't seen these since... Fiber. These are my floats. If you want to be nosy and have a look. I know I like to see people's floats. Look all my ends are woven in and everything. So those are my little Palatine socks that I can actually wear now. Yay! So they're cute. They're big and they'll be slightly but they're cute. So that was another little echo. They were my February socks. Did I post them in the grocery box thing? I think I did. Cute. Another finished object. Run or roll. Still socks. These are my first pair of March socks. So in the sock bash, if you knit a pair of shorties, you have to knit two in order to have that count as one entry. You can either knit one full pair of socks or two pairs of shorties. So I started off with a pair of shorties. This is Lonely Mountain Yarns, a dyer very local to me. Um, Marie Claire. Marie Claire? Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know how to pronounce her name. It's terrible. I talk to her all the time on Instagram. Um, this is her little 70 gram sock set in the colour bouquet. Look how cute her little... I love her little card, little label. These are adorable. So these are the Buds and Blooms socks by This Handmade Life. I'm throwing everything everywhere. God, it's been so long since I finished these as well. Like at least a couple of weeks. These are the Buds and Blooms. And they're so cute and it's exactly my colours. Like, they're adorable, aren't they? Very, very cute. Love these little shorties. Um, traditional little heel flap and gusset. Little easy to memorize pattern. And my little toe and cuff. I really wish I'd done my heel flap and turn in the purple as well, but I did not. So they're one half of my March sock bash and I may as well show you the other part of my March sock bash because it's a whip. So many finished objects. So one, two, three pairs of socks, four is a hat, five is a jumper. Five finished objects. Are there any more in here? No. Right. Okay. We're on to the whips. I'll show you my socks for... Um, sock bash. <clears throat> so the theme for this month is embroidery on knits. Um, I'm sure you've seen that book called Embroidery on Knits. Um, that's very, very popular at the minute. I haven't bought it. I keep thinking of it and then I'm like, mm, am I going to embroider on my knits? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sold on it yet. But 
um, because the theme is embroidery and knits, it's something I haven't done. So I thought you may as well do it. So I'm knitting a little plain shorty to make up my pair for the month. This is Pixie Yarn. I think it was a one of a kind that I bought years ago. It's deep in stash. I've already knit something out of it. It was just there. Um, I actually put some of my 60 or 50 gram skeins of yarn together with some minis and made my own little sock set out of my stash. So this was one of them. So this one's just waiting for an afterthought heel. This one is nearly there. Oh, only another inch to go on that. Um, and then this is a random mini. I think this is actually a botanical yarns mini. So I'm just knitting little plain socks and then what I might do is take some white yarn and embroider, either embroider a little daisy chain along the leg or something on the top of the foot. I don't know. I guess I can do it and then if I don't like I can just pull it out. That's no, no big deal. But these are sort of a blank canvas to try out my little embroidery experiment on my knitting. So these are straight sock in it. I think I cast on six to four stitches to two by two rib and I'm using 2.25 inch needles. I'm pretty sure that's my go-to. Yeah. On my faithful child rules. And so that's my kind of reading knitting. Um, and they're in a bag that I made. No, you and I both know that I hate sewing. I will never offer, I will never start a bag sewing business because this took me, no word of a lie, five hours to sew, start to finish, but it's adorable. So I felt like I needed a little spring project bag for my sock knitting. And so I went onto a uh, wool warehouse and they had some Liberty fat quarters. Um, if you're not into sewing fat quarters are just like a quarter of the meter so it's like slightly more than a quarter of a meter but um it's a good way of buying beautiful fabric that would be too expensive to buy as a full meter and i can make two bags out of three fat quarters so let me show you I can't remember what it's called, like what the fabric's called, but they're matching. And then you want to see the inside? <laughs> she has pockets. She's adorable. This is my go-to sewing bag pattern. It is can do patterns, can do something, can do sews, something like that on Etsy. I'll link that below. And so adorable that I made Chloe one too. Because of course I did. I'll show you Chloe's. I had to line Chloe's with a different fabric. Whenever I make these with the pockets, it takes twice the amount of fabric. So Chloe got a different fabric. It was in my stash for the inside. But I made her a little pocket for the front. Isn't that adorable? And then that's Chloe's fabric on the inside. And I didn't do, I did a little pocket on the outside for Chloe. The pockets on the inside for me, but of course I had to do matching. Don't you fudge us? So this one's Chloe's, lined again with her little fabric. Cute. And this one's mine, lined with the fabric. Um, if you want to buy something like this, but much better made the mine are thrown together then my friend Emma in her company is uh, Little Love and I she sells little notions pouches just like this on Etsy so I'll link her shop below if you want to get your hand on some little cute pouches um, and she does Liberty Fabrics too but uh adorable so this is how long I made these start of March haven't seen Chloe to give her her little treat a little gift so <clears throat> maybe I'll see her this weekend because I'm feeling a bit better 
Um, one of the other things that I keep, I keep meaning to show you. Maybe I'll save it up for the end because I do have more. This makes no sense because I'm just talking to myself about it. I'll come back to that. Okay. Regroup, refocus, not lay you're all over the place. Right, I have some whips. The biggest whip that you haven't seen. Unless you've seen my Instagram, in which case then you will have seen it. I cast on a sweater. My initial idea was I want to knit a sweater every month and then life happened. So I cast on in February the Orbit Sweater by Unwind Knitwear, I think that's the name. This is a colourwork sweater. Um, it says it's finger and weight but I, it's more of a sport weight gauge really for me. Um, and I could only get a gauge with sport weight yarn. So I'm using John Arbin Yarnadelic um, that I got from Hanks. Let me find my colours. So this one is called The Beautiful Ones. And this one is called... Oh no, this is called The Beautiful Ones. So what's my purple called then? beautiful why have I only saved all right Natalie you're not very clever today <gasps> please be happy <gasps> waltz oh look I was clever I tied the purple around I paid 17.50 for the each of these skeins this is waltz the other one's the beautiful ones and you might be able to see there's purple woven into this they're very complex colors um, it's like slight yellows and purples and blues in this. So, are you ready? There's so many ends everywhere and it's on tight needles, which is annoying to show. <laughs> Look at this. So this pattern is one of the most complicated patterns I've worked on colour work wise to date. Oh, it's beautiful. Because there are quite a few different charts. It was one of those patterns, it, my go-to when I'm knitting colour work is to read through the whole pattern and highlight my numbers for my size but also my instructions because in some patterns not every instruction is for you and that can get confusing and there were charts but you started at different parts of it plus she's very clever in that they've given you oh, it's just right why am I rambling when we could just take a moment to look at this so they give you two charts for each round basically you have the first repeat is different to the second repeat because they want you to be able to knit it without an obvious join and it really works like you can't see you can only really tell that's the center because of my stitch marker there so it took a wee second for me to get my head around that um and there were a couple instances where i started to knit just the first repeat around the whole thing I had to take it back a little bit but that's okay taking back is part of knitting um so this color work goes onto the body which i've never done before um that meant casting on under here was in color work pattern so it was challenging but i could do it you know once i went through highlighted specifically my parts and worked out which parts of each chart were for me and crossed out the stuff that I didn't know then that made it much easier to follow through. I wouldn't go into this pattern blind not having done that work before because it really did help me figure out in my head this you know complicated advanced pattern not complicated advanced so um let me tell you my woes with gauge and I know Maddie from um, We Share Needles has also mentioned this. 
my I did a gauge swatch I was very very good no was I very very good in that I did my gauge swatch in color work no I didn't so you know that's my fault but I did a gauge swatch and then I no 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 and I was so sick that I could only really pick it up and knit a little bit at a time and then put it back so I was not in the frame of mind to figure out or check my gauge but this niggling feeling in the back of my head was like you need to check if you're on gauge here you need to check if you're on gauge here and the other part was me I'm too tired I'm so ill I did a gauge watch it'll be fine it'll be fine my friends I was not on gauge not even a little bit the gauge I think is 24 stitches for four inches I was on 29 29 which means that I'm squeezing a lot more stitches in so my jumper's going to be small which is not what I want no it's not what I want at all I've discovered this here I got it ready split for sleeves I was in the body color work I was in the last chart and I thought, Natalie, bite the bullet and check your gauge. So, I was very cross with myself. I tried it on and luckily my shoulders are narrower than the rest of me. So, it actually fits here. It's a little bit of negative ease around the bust, which I'm fine with. Um, it was under the arms. Um when my measurements start to get bigger that it was going to be tight if I continue so the part that I'm on now you don't increase anymore you just continue straight down and if I continue straight down I wouldn't have liked the fit at all so <clears throat> what I decided to do was I tried it on I realized that, that it fit here but I knew that I would need more stitches to make it more comfortable for me so it'll kind of go a-line um, so what I did was I increased in between the colour work. So by this stage, I was lucky in that this chart, the colour work, let me just pull it up so you can see better. The colour work is quite spread out. So what I did was I put some increases in between here. So for one round, I increased at the same part for every repeat. And then the next round, I did a plane. And then the round after that, I increased on the other side of the chart the whole way around so I increased a full set of repeats twice and then I knit the chart that was fine and added another increase row round after the chart as well so I think that's what I'm gonna do I'll try so the last round I did was an increase round I'm gonna knit maybe an inch, try it on again and see if I need some more increase in. And I'm just gonna really gradually increase till I get the size that I want, which is annoying because that means more stitches. But I have plenty of yarn, I have plenty of the main color of yarn. So this is, I had four skeins. Um, I'm in my second skein. And I've just not like a lot left. The second skin. I am worried about my purple because I only have this. It's 19 grams and I have two sleeves to do. And I haven't looked at how long the colour work is down the sleeves. So I don't think this is gonna be enough. So we will see. I'm going to do, I'm going to split the ball in half, knit one sleeve, see where I'm at. Might need to go to Hank's and pick up another skein. So because I, yeah, it's been in slight time out because it's just annoying me that my gauge was off. Um, I know it'll go a little bit bigger when I block it, but not an extra five stitches bigger. So... At least it fits. At least I, don't, I thought I was going to have to rip it all back. And I would have been raging about that. I think I probably would have just given up on it. So I'm glad that I didn't. And I'm glad that I can make it work. 
um, and it's just a lesson for me in that I need to take my gauge kind of here and be prepared to rip back because my gauge swatches just don't match what I end up knitting and that's really infuriating. But <laughs> apparently I'm a tight knitter because I uh, need to go up needle sizes routinely. <laughs> So that is one of my biggest projects. It's been living in my pamper bucket from Hohe & Co. This is the Grocery Girls one they did a few years ago. And I think she'll be in time out for a little while longer. Let me have a little drink. My throat's hurting. Okay. <clears throat> Next. I should have known I was sick in Edinburgh because I brought just one project because I thought if I bring this I'm here for a week if I bring only this and work on only this then I will pretty much get it to the stage where it's just stockinette or garter stitch and I can get it done didn't happen <laughs> this is my Achun shawl this has been on the needles for a long time, probably like a year now, which is annoying to me because I really want the shawl. It is an Andrew Mari pattern. Let me see what size the front. This size the front. Andrew Mari pattern. Okay, so I, you can see I made a little bit of progress. So this is a mix of brioche knitting on this side and fisherman's rib. On this side I've never done fisherman's rib before it's very stretchy very addictive very easy to memorize um having said that it is an eight row repeat so now that these uh these rows are getting long it does take a little bit of time to um get through an eight row repeat but um, this is my progress in Edinburgh, <laughs> which is not very much considering it's the only knit and I brought with me. I should have known I wasn't well when that was how much I was getting done. Because Edinburgh was chilled, like Jess and I went to some bookshops and puckled about a bit, but it was a chilled trip. Um, and yeah, I just want it. So basically you knit the brioche side, the fisherman's rib side for, I think she does 24 repeats in her pattern. And then you end it with this big, big swathe of garter stitch. And the reason I picked it was I wanted a big shawl that I could use a lot of yarn up for. And I said to myself when I cast it on, I don't want to skip out on this squishy part because this is the part that's going to wrap. I have another Andrea Mari one. Here it is. What one is this called? What's, what one is this called? Not even that well. Um, I can't remember what this shawl is called, but it's beautiful. It's another brioche one by Andrea Mari. Look at that beautiful border. So I knit this for my mum, and then I knit myself one because I had to. And actually, I'm using the leftover yarns in this. This is Life in the Long Grass. Um, beautiful shawl but long rather than um, broad oh look at that detail I love this do you know I always thought I'm not going to be a shawl person but see when I'm sitting like just in my wee house I live my best little granny old woman life and wrap myself up and read my little book and knit on my little things and sit with my little dog and live my best life. This is so cosy and it's actually been so nice when I'm sick because it just feels like you're being hugged. Oh, I can't remember the name of this but I'll link it below. It's beautiful. This took forever and I love it. It was so worth it. Basically you had all of these stitches on the needles and then you got another set of um, DPNs <clears throat> and you cast on and you knit your brioche and picked up 
and that's how you basically did that the whole way along. It took a long time, but it's so worth it. Look at that beautiful applied border. Do you know I might actually do it on this one too? It doesn't call for it. I think it just ends with a gorgeous stitch. So there's some elements that are the same in that it has brioche and then garter. And so the shawl that I'm in now will end in garter, but a big, big, big chunky garter. So I think I might apply that edge again because it's beautiful. I would have to work out my stitch count and work it out a little bit, but this shawl is a labor of love. Not this one, the one that's actually on the needles. It's a labor of love and I fall out of love with it sometimes, but if it's gonna look anything like this one, I want it. So this one I love because you can just wrap it around, but I also love a shawl that's like long and deep. So I did knit her what the fade. So this one it comes down like halfway down my back, whereas I want this to be like, almost like a blanket, the one that I'm knitting. See where it's kind of, it's not deep. I want this one to be deep so that I can come round like a big blanket basically that I can wear like around the house. And I have the yarn to do it. There's so much yarn going into it. So rather than just casting it off, getting fed up with it and casting it off, I'm gonna keep taking away. I think if I create some sort of system for myself <clears throat> or like a little goal where this is how much I do every day or whatever, then that will incentivize me to do it. But yeah, little guest appearance in this one. So anyway, this is the attune. I will see how it goes. A little bit of progress on it. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'm knitting this on, what size now am I using? A 3.5. Finger and weight yarn. I've just got a load of scrappy yarn that's the same kind of colour family. And then, is there anything interesting in here? No, here's another little pouch that I need. So yeah. <coughs> in another Pamba bucket. I apologise for all the coughing in the middle of this. It's, there's nothing worse than listening to somebody cough. Yep. Maybe listen to a dog licking himself. I really hope you can't hear Henry cleaning his paws. I know, BD. I'm not talking to you. Okay. The last whip. This is a big one. I'm really proud of myself. I'm going to wipe the mascara from under my eye before I talk about it. Right. I have made serious progress on my granny square blanket. Oh, look at all those ends, that's disgusting. But anyway, I've been working on a granny square scrappy blanket for years, three years easily. And so what I'm doing is, I am a very typical uh, Virgo in that it can't, can't just be scrappy, it has to look cohesive. But the idea was to use up all the scrap leftover yarn that I have and make a granny square blanket out of it. And then I thought, no, I need to organise it slightly. I can't just throw things in anywhere. So what I've done is I've created blocks of 16 little granny squares and joined them together. It kind of like patchwork style. So these ones kind of picked up colours from this yarn that I had. These are my purple and golds. I've got little pinks here. These ends are not going to be fun. That's another purple. Oh, that purple and gold was really good in that too. Another purple. So I need 25 of these to make um, a five by five square blanket. These are my little neons. They look good, don't they? Um, and then some blue. And then one more purple. So I've been sitting with these for a year untouched. And then when I got sick, I thought, 
Well, part of me was thinking, if I need to use up yarn, then an easy way to use up yarn from my stash is to make the granny squares because I can count that very quickly. They're easy wins. Um, in my kind of challenge to myself where I'm wanting to knit as much as I'm bringing it, this is an easy way for me to get those numbers balanced a wee bit. So I said to myself, you need 25 of these. Why don't you bundle what you have together into their colour families and then see if you have enough and just start working your way through. Well, my friends, I did all 25. I did all 25 bundles. So these are the ones that have their white borders and they're in their little full grid. Here are my bundles. Tied together with a little ribbon because I'm adorable. So I've got a little purple bundle. I'm gonna pull all these out. Purple. These are my greens. And my pinks. And some more pinks. Like I have like Jenny in there. Look. I'm not even joking. I have 25 of these. Last one, last one, last one, last one. No. Can't believe I've, so I've knit no I've crocheted every single colored square now what are my details for my oh I have two more bundles here if you were keeping count you said Natalie that's not 25 yes it is so what am I using I'm using a three millimeter hook for finger and weight yarn will I ever crochet another finger and weight blanket no no, I will not. Do you, if you think to yourself, I have so much finger and weight, scrappy yarn, I could just crochet a blanket, double it, hold it double, don't do it to yourself, it's horrible. It's horrible. I mean, it will feel lovely once it's done. But look at these ends. So much. There's so much work involved in it. It really is years in the making, but... I couldn't like throw out what I had done and then double it. I couldn't do it. So I committed and I got all of my bundles ready to go. So I think I have eight of these. So my next stage is to turn these into one of these. Um, <clears throat> so I think I've used about 400 grams of yarn just on these. Which is lovely because that's a good tally coming off my total that I've purchased which I've yet to show you um so to incentivize myself I so I have my my kind of border color it's just a natural yarn this is one I was trying out I think it's a cascade 220 um I won't buy any more of that because the ply is just totally different this is a cascade heritage and um it's the natural colour, not the white colour. I do have the white and it's like a blue white. I wonder if I take that one out. I'll grab it quickly. Are you in there? No, I don't know where it is. Um, yeah, the white is like a brilliant white. Too white. Doesn't look right. So I've measured these. I'm going to count this. I've taken down a note of what weight this was. I'm going to count this in my tally of yarn used once I've used it up in these. And then I'm going to do a little cheat. Don't tell me off. It's my rules. I'm going to count my ends as yarn used. Even though technically they've already been counted in these. I'm still going to, I need incentive to get rid of these or I will just never. It will be a fringed blanket. So I need to incentivize myself. So I'm going to count the ends I sew in as yarn used up to. And I know, like, in reality it won't be true. But in my head, I need it. I need it for me. It's never going to get done if I don't. So <laughs> that's my big project that I've been working and working and working on. It's such a good project for 
audiobooks. Cannot crochet and watch TV at the same time. Knitting, no problem. Cannot crochet. I don't know how people do it. My friend has just started crocheting not even a year and she can crochet and watch TV and she watched a YouTube video and then made herself a crochet jumper. Mind blown. Like, mind blown. So, yeah, this is all scrappy yarn from projects that I've already made. Some of it is minis <clears throat> that I had in stash just to make up the colour family. And I've got my scrap yarn down to just this box. Which is pretty good because this box was full for a while. So, that's all my project. That I've been working on over the past two months. It's a lot. Oh my god, 51 minutes in. I need to get some breakfast too. Anyway, I'll very quickly go through my yarn purchases. Right, but very bold. Very bold. You can tell me off, it's okay. Um, first thing, and um, you know, kind of sad news is that Giddy Ant Yarns are closing up shop, but they're rebranding. So um, it's two sisters that run Giddy Ant Yarns and Inspiring Yarns. And I think they're gonna move to Dying Yarn under the Inspiring Yarns colorway. So I picked this up at one of the fine and dandy markets in Belfast a few, when was that? February? I think it must have been the day after I podcasted. Um, I picked this one up for Neil. I don't know whether it's going to be socks or a muscle bra yet. This is like the exact colour of his beard. So <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it'll be a hat or not. He'll see what he wants. He'll love me for saying that. <laughs> but he tells me he watches these videos all the way through and then he doesn't. So Sorry. <laughs> So, what is this? This is called Bark. You, I don't think you can get this anymore. So, sorry. This is their Hex colorway in Sparkles. <laughs> I couldn't leave this. Like, this is beautiful. Look at those sparkles. <sighs> Gorgeous. And then, couldn't resist this. It's called Stillness. Little 50 gram skein. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. I'm really into that blue at the minute. Oh, it matches this. Oh, that's beautiful. So that's my little giddy ants haul. No. Also, um, Lonely Mountain Yarns. She's been taking a little bit of a break, but she put up a couple of skeins in her shop and I could not resist. It was like, she was calling my name. She was saying, Natalie, I've put your colors in the shop. Alert, alert. This is so dreamy. I'm funny I say that because it's called Dreaming of You. Little sock set. I love her sock sets. Really well priced. It's the perfect amount of yarn. If you don't want to end up with lots and lots of scraps. That's how I ended up with so many scraps that I can make an entire blanket out of them. Um, love, love, love. And I don't know why I got this because I don't really knit much with mohair. But I couldn't leave this either because it's so spring. And look at these colours, they're mine. Had to be mine. So I don't know what this is going to be. It might be a little pair of fluffy socks. There's so much yardage in here that I could knit four pairs of socks and still have enough. So we'll see. I don't really like wearing mohair around my chin because I'm kind of sensitive to it. But definitely little frilly socks would be cute. Oh! Well, obviously, a little fluffy mohair frill on those. Gorgeous. It's called Amica. Um, 50 grams, uh, 140, no, 420 meters, 459 yards. 72% kid mohair, 28% silk. And again, with their beautiful little holographic labels. Love those. So that had, I just, I couldn't resist. It was beautiful. And I believe it's Friday today, I believe Pixie Horn's going to do her first 
update, I think of the year? It'll be coming soon anyway. So I will be looking at that straight out. Um, my February yarn club from um, Beehive Yarns arrived. Oh, this is her very vintage club. Always matches her little tea bag to the club. That's her inspiration picture. I'm getting the mini sets this year. Last year I got the very good at skeins. Love, 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 love. Um, right, okay. This is a random purchase. And um, you can tell I kind of wasn't really myself because I have never wanted to knit like a little cuddly toy. Never. I don't, that's not for me. So I don't like the three tiny things. Um, I don't like think I don't like little delicate things that make my hands feel giant. Which is a strange thing to say, but that's how I feel. <laughs> and you can tell I wasn't well because I saw this and I was like, I must, I must have this. I think Jessie May actually posted one and I'm so Im easily influenced by her because I love everything she does. Um, I want to knit a frog. <laughs> I've never wanted to knit a frog in my life. Why? I don't care about, well not that I don't care about frogs, I don't have a particular interest in frogs. But I just really want this frog. And there's a TikTok account that has a little frog that has a little dressing gown and slippers. And she just does little self-care froggy things and I need it. Oh my God, adorable. So of course I want to knit a frog and also knit her a dressing gown. Of course I do. So this is on Ravelry. This pattern is by Claire Garland. It's literally called Frog. It's for DK weight, which I didn't even look at the what weight I needed. I just went immediately to Hank's yarn parlor and picked up some Jemison and Smith 25 gram skeins because this is like very traditional for like knitting colorwork jumpers but there's I don't think I could wear a colorwork jumper in this yarn it is very scratchy to me um but I could knit a frog in it it's so cute so the colors are gray brown and FC 46 mix which is like a kind of greeny sort of color these were 325 each for 25 grams they're finger and weight. Two ply jumper weight. 100% real Shetland wool. I think that would be enough for a frog. Probably. Um, so I haven't cast on my frog yet. Because I haven't really had the brain power. But I really want a frog. <laughs> I really want a frog. So maybe I will. I've got the yarn today anyway. Frog. So, right, the last things that I bought were ages ago and I've forgotten entirely what I wanted to make with them, which is not helpful because I bought a lot of them. The first thing, I've been watching Crab Annette's and she churns out those jumpers like nobody's business. She churns them out. That girl has probably at least one jumper every podcast episode, if not two or three. Like, finished. She's so quick at knitting her jumpers. And she's knit some camisoles, so I remember what I wanted to make with this. So, I wonder if I added them to my queue. Or if I just saved them as favourites. Let me check. Queue. See, if I had been on my game, I would have added them to the old queue. My foot's going numb from talking to you so much. That's great. Yeah, I did add them to my queue. Right, perfect. Perfect, well done. Well done, well done. So the first one I want to knit, which is one that Rebecca from Crab Ennets made, was the Allure Camisole by Kydri, Kydri, C-A-I-D-R-E-E. -E. 
Right, obviously I will not look like that in my camisole, but I do want something that's like a layer in piece. Um, this is initially knit out of Cardiff Cashmere Brush Light. It's a finger and weight yarn. Um, mm -mm. I purchased following um, Rebecca's lead some knitting for olive pure silk. And I didn't know what colour to go for so I went for cream. Which actually looks like a brilliant white rather than a cream. But... I've been watching all these videos on TikTok about like colour theory and what colour suits you and now I'm double guessing everything that I've bought and you know whatever. Anyway, went for a neutral. I've got four of these which should be plenty. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's all sitting in a project bag ready to go. I just didn't write down the name of the project that I wanted to knit. Like it's even got needles in here. So I must have swatched. Did I? I must have swatched for a thing that I can't remember I wanted to make. <gasps> I did. Right, no, this is a cop out swatch. You know how I was complaining about my swatch not matching my gauge? <laughs> what is this now? Anyway, I did a little swatch. Apparently I'm on gauge for whatever the pattern is. I think it's this camisole. Um, God, I did that so long ago, I can't remember. So, yeah, I'm all ready to go, apparently. Even got my needles in here. Wow. Well, that's ready to pass on then. So that's one top <clears throat> that's ready to go, apparently. In a big version of the um, sock sacks, sock project bags that I make. So I've got that on the go. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So then I purchased, in the same order, some yarn for the Tolsta tea, which is one of Carabea's own patterns. Look how cute she is. It's adorable. Um, she knit one out of this, I believe, Drops Bell. Look at my jittery hand because I need some breakfast. Um, Unicolor, this is in colour 02. Um, I bought seven skeins of this. It wasn't expensive. I can't quite remember how much it was, but it was no more than three pounds of all, if even. Um, made to decay weight. A fingering weight version has now been added to this pattern and I think this is fingering weight. My god, like I sat and figured out exactly what I needed and exactly what my gauge should be and all of that information has gone from my brain. Might be on my Notion on my laptop, I hope so. It will be. Will it? Anyway, I have seven skeins of this and uh, I better knit it. Feels nice actually. So what is the, what is it made up of? 53% cotton, 33% viscose, 14% linen. Feels lovely. Like I wanted some summer tops. That was the thinking behind the camisole and by this Tulsa tea. And I figured she's got a nice, I know what it was. So the, her main version there is stripey, but she has this eyelet version. That's what I want to make. So I'm going to make that version. And if it means I have too much of this yarn, then I can buy more to add to it and knit the stripy version. That was the plan, right, Natalie? Your brain's engaging. I took a wee while. Okay, last yarn purchase. I was looking through my stash because obviously I don't want to keep purchasing yarn. I want to use the stash. And so I've been looking at... This is the Hepatica sweater by Emily Meyer. Oh, it's gorgeous. I think it's knit in different um, um, mohairs. So I think the, the cream is a finger and weight and all the colors are mohairs, but 
I could replicate this with the stash that I have. So I knew I needed, I basically have lots and lots of things and weight skeins of yarn that are like plain colour or like slightly variegated but I don't have like three or four skeins of yarn in the same colourway because that would then be, I would have bought that intentionally for a jumper and it wouldn't have been just a, oh I like that skin, I need to get it. So I have a lot of I like that skin, I need to get it skins in my stash and I want to use them and in order to use them I have to add yarn to make a nice cohesive jumper. So what I wanted to do was try Chester Wilco. Apparently they're one of the main suppliers of UK yarn dyers <clears throat> where you can buy the wool in bulk to dye it and but you can also buy from wool warehouse just skeins for yourself. They're kind of messy the way they arrived but I ordered four because I figured it would be good to have a nice neutral. If I don't use it in all in one jumper I can put, pair my random skeins with it and create a couple of jumpers. So this is the undyed um, yarn. This is Platinum Sock. 75% squash merino 25% nylon. Kind of standard issue for UK dyers. This is what they're dying with. And the thing that surprised me is how creamy and buttery it looks. Like this is undyed. And look, it has like a yellow sheen to it. So if I show you the neutral, I figured I could use it in my um in my granny square blanket if it didn't sit, but there's definitely a difference there. It's, you can't really see on screen but this is far more yellow toned than the natural colour. Oh well, it doesn't look different on screen at all. But in person this looks yellow. So it's too yellow for that but it'll be perfect for my jumpers. So I bought four skins of that. So that amounts to about a kilo of yarn as I would trim my stash. run out of storage on my head. I don't know, I don't know if I'm like positioned properly. I don't know what I was saying. Um <laughs> I've never run out of storage on my iPad before. It's way too long to be hawking. But yeah, I've added about a kilo of yarn to my stash. I have about eight, nine days left in the month. So realistically if I could cook if I could get my jumper finished, that would be about 400 grams of yarn used up. And I've got about 300 or so grams used up in my crochet blanket. But I'm not going to break even. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think that's everything for me. I've been doing a lot of reading this month. So I read lots actually. Let's find my phone and I'll give you a little rundown of my reading. Um, mm -mm -mm, Goodreads. Let's see, my books read. Um, I love listening to audiobooks, especially books that are classics that I know I won't read normally. So I read um, Slaughterhouse Five. Listen to that on Audible. It's your man James Franco narrating it. It's pretty good. Um, I read The Appeal I Borrowed from the Library by Janet Janice Hallett. I uh, love that. It's basically, it's an easy read. It's basically two lawyers are sifting through um, email transcripts and text transcripts trying to figure out what happened in this murder case. And I'm so nosy, I'm like, tell me all about it. Let me read all the emails, I'll figure this out. So that was great, loved that. I listened to Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. <clears throat> um, loved it too. Kind of slight magic realism. Loved it. Um, the other big one that I listened to was Parade's End by Ford Maddox Ford. Um, and loved it like really surprisingly loved it. I think I like reading those kind of books 
because it gives me historical fiction drama vibes but it was written contemporaneously so it's not historical fiction in that somebody now is writing about the first world war period the period of the first world war it's a book that was written five years after it seven years after it and um so i'm getting those kind of historical drama vibes that I get from the TV shows that I like to watch, like Night and Abbey, but from someone closer to it and people just making it up now. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, the narrator's Bill Nye. I think he's part of the reason why I loved it so much because he is incredible at the accents. Of course he is. Because I forgot that he was that weird octopus guy in... Um, Parts of Caribbean. Um, I can't remember what his name is, but he does this Scottish accent. And in the book, there are a couple of Scottish characters, and he just slides into that Scottish accent so easily and convincingly. Neil was like in the room when I was listening to it a couple of times, and he couldn't get over that it's Bill Nye doing all of the voices. Incredible production. If you have Audible, I really would recommend that. It's very, very long, it's 38 hours of audio and you can tell how sick I was because the only thing I could do is do granny squares and listen to audiobooks. So I listened to that, loved it. I read Cold Comfort Farm, borrowed that from the library, loved that too. Actually no I didn't love that, why am I saying that? I didn't love that. The, the main character is called Flora Post and she's hateful and annoying and I didn't like her. And so I, the reason I read it was because I borrowed what turns out to be the sequel from the library. And it annoyed me that I picked up the sequel and not the first one. So I listened to the audiobook version on our library app called Libby. Which is great that they had it because obviously I don't need to pay for it. So listened to the first one. Hated the protagonist. I'm going to read the second one because it's short and I have it. From the library but um mm, mm, she's not for me um and then i've been reading the body keeps the score by what's that guy called bessel van der kolk mind brain and body in the transformations of trauma it's not a light read really fascinating kind of tracking the development of mental health care in america because he was at the forefront of it um, and he witnessed a lot of it. So fascinating. Really enjoying that. Um, but it's a heavy read. Um, and then the last book that I'm reading right now. And I really would recommend it. I'm really surprised at myself. is called The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. By Grady Hendrix. Um, it is kind of. Stephen King meets Steel Magnolias. Steel Magnolias is one of my favourite movies. I love it so much. I love Julia Roberts. I will not hear a bad word said about her. I absolutely love her. And I love Steel Magnolias. I love Dolly Parton. I love Shirley MacLaine. I love everybody in Steel Magnolias. It's perfect. And when I was listening to this, I was like, she really, the, the protagonist, really reminds me of Sally Fields in Steel Magnolias specifically. Um, but it's kind of scary. Like, it's funny. And there are parts of it that are making me laugh out loud, but then it's also scary. It's set in the 90s. It's like a little gaggle of housewives go to a very strict book club and then some of them get a bit pissed off about it, break off and join in their own book club where they read books about serial killers. So they read um, Anne Rose stuff like Ted Bundy, they read Helter Skelter, they read all these dramatic stuff, dramatic things and then weird stuff happens around town and somebody moves in and people get attacked and it's like, it's actually frightening, the way, like it is frightening some of the scenes in it, it's very Stephen King and she mentions in it Salem's Lot which I read a couple of years ago and I'm just getting those vibes from it. It's really good. Really enjoying it. 
Um, so that's that's been my life. I've been reading and listening to books and trying to cut down on my yarn stash and failing massively. So but that is everything for me. Henry is sick of my voice. He is so done. I don't know if you can hear him just do a little cheeky in the corner there. Um but yeah, that's everything for me. Sorry it's been so long. If you've made it this far, you deserve a medal because my God, I can't even bear the sound of my own voice for this long. But yeah, that's everything for me. Um, I promise all being well, I will be back in two weeks. I'm back on track. My energy level is up here now. I'm good to go. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for being patient with me. And I will see you next time. Happy knitting. Look after yourself. Bye. I'm gonna, can, can you hear myself growing? I really hope you can. Anyway, bye. <laughs> My God. It'll be really awkward if you can't hear it. But also, I need to go eat breakfast. Okay, bye.